friends and family, it's me, Jessie. Well, today I'm here to tell you all about the super extensive process, as I'm sure you know if you decided to bring your pets with you to China. That is taking your pets through the airlines and through quarantine and all of that other stuff to China. So for me, I have decided to bring one of my pets with me. I am bringing my older cat who is a bit more anxious and a little bit less adoptable with me to China because let's just face it, in this day and age, our pets are pretty much like our kids to us. And so today I have my trusty notes with me to give you a little bit more information so you have an idea of what to expect as you go through your process of trying to bring your pet with you to China. I'm sure the first thing you think of is probably the rabies vaccination. So. When it comes to the vaccinations and the health certificate that you have to acquire because you have to have a rabies vaccination or a proof of rabies vaccination within the past year, an international health certificate that has been stamped and performed within the past 14 days, as in so you're entering China in 14 days and that would be the time period in which you would receive your international health certificate endorsed by the US Drug Administration or the USDA. You also have to have a photocopy of your own passport and then probably a, p a pet passport for them as well, which I believe is optional but will make things a little bit quicker for you and photograph of your pet as well. Some other things to consider may also be if you have a band drop dog breed for example, so I know for a fact that pit bulls I believe are not allowed in China, or if you have the appropriate carrier. Or if you maybe have a nervous dog, consider the fact that while a cat can fly as a carry-on, a dog cannot. So your dog will be in cargo and will likely be held in quarantine. Some other things to consider in the factor of quarantine before we move on about what we need to get is that depending on what airport you fly into, that will change the amount of time that your pet is in quarantine unless they are deemed unhealthy. So we'll get to all these things in just a moment. But first things first, one thing to note is that you do not have to get a teeter test like you do when you're going to Japan. So Japan is a rabies-free country while China is not. So when moving to Japan, a lot of you may have noticed that some other YouTubers may have had some trouble getting their teeter test done for their pet to come to Japan. Fortunately for us, that is not the case in China. You just have to have a proof of that vaccination stamped by your USDA and approved by your veterinarian. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your vet and make sure, get them examined and everything, you know, like their routine health checkup, and make sure that they are healthy enough to travel abroad. Because let's face it, going out of their home country and staying on a plane for hours on end is a pretty traumatic and stressful experience for a pet and that is something that you need to keep in mind in case you have a pet that may not necessarily be able to tolerate being in a cabin with a bunch of people or being in cargo with other animals as well. You're going to want to call ahead to whatever airport you're flying into and to the airline that you're flying with to notify them that you will be bringing a pet with you. You can't just arrive at the port of entry and have a pet and not have called ahead because that's likely going to land you in a tiny bit of a sticky situation. So make sure you keep that in mind. Call well in advance then call again like a month later and then call again the next month just to make sure that you've done your due diligence so that you don't run into a sticky situation because it does happen, people are human and mistakes are made. Like I said before, you are going to have to produce your rabies vaccination, which you can get, you don't necessarily have to get done 14 days before, but considering that you will be paying a visit fee with your vet, that you're going to be getting other vaccinations done, and that you're going to have to get all the stamps by whoever is doing your endorsement, I think it's best just to go ahead and get that rabies vaccination done 14 days in advance and make sure they're vaccinated for all of the things like feline leukemia, kennel cough is a good thing to get them vaccinated for, especially considering they will be in quarantine. Make sure you get all of those things done 14 days in advance because those checkups are yearly and you may bring them back to the states to get their checkup when you fly back to visit your family or you may want the longest period of time that you can have while you're trying to find a veterinarian in China. Next, you are going to have to have a copy of your passport and all of these things that you have, you're going to want to have photocopies of. So a photocopy of the International Health Certificate, a photocopy of the Bravies vaccination, a photocopy of their vaccination booklet, uh, m multiple copies of your passport probably, because they will be keeping all of these documents with them in the quarantine agency. So just keep that in mind moving forward. You also are going to have to have a photograph of your pet. And so all of this information is also going to be put, the photograph of your pet and the proof of health, so to speak, their, their certificate or a copy of it is going to be on the side of their kennel. And this kennel also has to be approved by the airline or an airline approved kennel, similarly to how you have to have certain other things sized appropriately for the airline. So make sure you are just bringing them to the airport in a random carrier because you may miss your flight and or you may have to leave your pet behind. So make sure you get a carrier that's approved and that you have all of his picture and all of his information pasted on the side of it. So you may be also wondering, because China does have that rule, where you have to have one pet per passport and one pet per visa. 
Unfortunately, there is no loophole that you can exploit to where you can bring more than one pet unless you have someone traveling as a companion with you because all of the information on the certificate has to coincide with the information on your passport. So say that you have a friend traveling with you and they are bringing your pet over but they're not staying in China, unless the information on their certificate states that it is owned by that person, they are not permitted to enter the country. So I have to have all of the information for my vet with my name and it has to align up with what's on my passport as well. On arrival, you are also going to have to take, so on arrival, you're going to go through customs and the first thing you're gonna do is go straight to that animal and plant quarantine agency. At the quarantine agency you're going to produce all of the documents that you have, let them know your situation, and then you are also um, going to have to pay, you are also going to have to pay a fee. What this fee is I'm not entirely sure because I haven't arrived in China and that wasn't a question that I asked when I called the airport. I'm assuming that fee will probably be a bit pricey because it is an import cost. And so expect to pay a couple of hundred dollars at the least. Just come prepared to pay money for it. It is an expensive process, unfortunately. So just make sure you've saved up in advance and planned ahead of time in order to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. So depending on your port of entry, so say you're flying into Guangzhou, Shanghai, or Beijing. So if you fly into Beijing, the quarantine is seven to 30 days. So depending on the health of your animal, they may be able to leave quarantine sooner rather than later, or if they take them into laboratory and see that they're exhibiting some signs of disease, they may decide to keep them until they believe they're healthy enough to leave the quarantine. In Shanghai, unfortunately, they will be left in quarantine for 30 days. That is a mandate of the Shanghai airport, so keep that in mind. And then in the case of me, since I will be moving to southern China, I will be flying them into Guangzhou airport. Fortunately, in the case of Guangzhou, which many other pet parents have chosen from what I've read online in forums, to fly through Guangzhou, you can avoid the quarantine process. So that doesn't mean that you just magically get to skip quarantine because that would be a little too perfect. It means that you'll be able to quarantine them at home, but keep in mind that you will have to find somewhere to stay until you find an apartment, unless it's provided by your company, that allows you to have a pet. And so just come with money prepared anyway to pay for a bit of boarding while you find a place for them to live. If they're in quarantine, big note. This is a big note. You will be at like liable for the cost of the quarantine. They don't pay for it, you pay for it. And quarantine can be upwards a thousand dollars. Yes, a thousand dollars. So just like I said before, keep that in mind if you do decide to take them with you because quarantine is pricey and you will be paying for it out of pocket. That being said, if you'll be there for a longer period of time or it's worth it for you, then you will make it work. So in some other cases, and some airlines allow this, not all airlines allow this, you'll be able to fly with an emotional support animal. Uh, an emotional support animal, I believe, is able to come out of the carrier. I do not know if this is the case with Chinese airlines. This is just the case with flying from a domestic, from a domestic airline to China, so to speak. Uh, if they're an emotional support animal, you can avoid some of the costs that are incurred with getting them onto the flight. So when you buy your ticket, you will also be buying a ticket for your pet as well. And that ticket, I believe, when I looked last, was about $400. For me to fly to Shanghai, so that's a, that's already fourteen hundred dollars if you have them quarantined for two days or two days for thirty days. So again, keep all of this in mind. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to be worth it if you really love your pets. So some other things, uh, like I said before, banned breeds. If you're bringing a dog, so I'm not bringing a dog with me, so I'm not sure how different this might be for you than it will be for me. Most dog breeds will be flying in cargo unless they're small enough to fit in the carry-on like a cat. A cat can fly as a carry-on and they may not be allowed to come into the country because pit bulls, like I said before, are banned among other breeds. So just make sure if you decide to bring your pet with you that in addition to watching this video, you do your due diligence as well because the last thing you want to do is spend all that money and spend all of that time and worry because it takes about three months to get all of these documents processed. You don't want to get there with your pet and then all of a sudden get turned back because you're probably going to want to fly them home. You're not just going to like ship them off by themselves. So keep that in mind. So once you've gotten all of these documents together, so you've gotten your health certificate, you've gotten your rabies vaccination, you've gotten your copy of your passport and your pet passport, you're going to take these things because it's unlikely that a local vet is going to be able to do this. I know that my local vet told me that she's not able to do the endorsement because it's just such a process. And so you'll take all of the information from your health checkup with their international to get the international health care certificate. You'll take that over to a USDA approved endorsement office for me, that is our university veterinary hospital, and they will 
endorse it for you. You may have to take it to your state capital. It just really depends on the process, which is why it's important for you to make sure you do all of this research for yourself as well. While this is a helpful video, it doesn't necessarily do all of the work for you. Some people may opt instead of doing all of this by themselves to fly with a travel locate relocation company for your pet. You can do that. I'm opting not to do that, but they are really expensive and that's on, on top of all the other expenses that you're incurring. But if you just don't wanna do all of this on your own or you're afraid to do all of this on your own or just you know make you feel better to have someone helping, then I would consider saving up the extra money. And do know that this is a lot of planning and saving. It's not just, let's bring them with us. It's gonna happen now. You're bringing a live animal over there. And with bringing a live animal means a whole big process. Do note that if you decide to bring two pets with you, it will be considered a commercial import rather than, a, you know, you're just bringing something of your possession with you. And so the process will be a bit different and different costs will be incurred as well. When you do go, make sure in trying to find your pet friendly apartment that they are pet friendly because you don't want to sneak a pet in that's illegal. Don't be that person. You're breaching your lease and you don't want to do that, especially in a different country. Or if you are rooming with your company, because as is the case with who I work with, you have the option to do room and board with them and it gets and it's for free. Uh, they unfortunately, in my case, do not allow for my pet to stay with me. So I will be on my own finding my own apartment, which was the choice that I made. But if that's not something that you want to have to deal with, then I would opt not to bring a pet with you. Just make sure you clear it with your company in advance and let them know that you will be bringing a pet with you because as I'm sure you've seen with all of this process, everything needs to be notified in advance. Nobody wants any surprises when you're you know, traveling to a different country, so just make sure you let the airline know in advance, you let the quarantine know in advance, and you let your company know in advance that you'll be bringing them. And keep in mind that you may have difficulties finding an apartment. There are pet-friendly apartments. I know there are several expats that have brought their pets with them, but it is a little bit more difficult to find one, and you will probably have to pay extra fees on top of all of the other fees that you're paying to uh, have your pet in your apartment as well. This is the last big thing for dogs. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know everything for dogs, but in the case of dogs, you have once you arrive in China, you need to make sure that you go to your local city police department because China requires you to register your dog. So you'll go to your police department with, again, all of this information with several photocopies of it. You'll bring this to your local police department and they will give you a registration for your dog because you can't, unfortunately, have a dog in China that is unregistered. With all that being said, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Make sure you click that notification and subscribe button so you can see any more content that's coming from me or for Teach English in China from all the other content creators. And we'll keep you as updated as we can on all the goings on in China and help you as best as we can on your way to get there because it's a scary process, but it's worth it. So with that being said, that's all I got for you today. Leave any questions down below and I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day.